Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new aroma bead video for you. I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of comments about questions on how to make these beads and where to order them from and a couple of common problems that some people are having, mostly with the company they're ordering from is taking a long time to ship. They feel like the shipping prices are too high or their aroma beads are sticking inside the molds. I ordered some new aroma beads off of Amazon that I found on Amazon. They were $18.25 for a three pound bag with free shipping and they were here in two days. I will put a link below to where I ordered them from. Um, so in case you wanna try that, you can try that instead. And I'm going to do a video using these beads so you can see just how these beads work. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to answer a couple of common questions that I get the most. And I'm also going to tell you about how I got my aroma beads completely free. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is a jar. I'm actually just using an old spaghetti jar. Um, you can use a mason jar. Some people I know also use Ziploc bags, but I like to use a jar. You're gonna take one cup of the beads. This is what they look like. Make sure you're using aroma beads and not wax beads. I like to use a funnel whenever I'm pouring them in because if they go everywhere, they go everywhere. So pour your beads in your jar. Like I said, that was one cup of the beads. A lot of people ask me how many uh, scents will I get from one cup. I'll usually get two to three depending on what size I make them. Then you're gonna use two tablespoons of fragrance oil. I'm gonna use vanilla. Then for the next step, I'm gonna put on gloves because the dye will really stain your hands. And you want to make sure you're using candle dye and not soap dye. Soap dye is water-based and it will not absorb correctly. I picked up this, you can't even see the label anymore, but I picked up this royal blue candle dye from Hobby Lobby. I think it was two or three dollars. And you're only going to use just a few drops. It really takes very, very little. That's really probably enough right there. Put your lid on and give it a shake. Now, you'll notice that all your beads are kind of sticking to the jar. It's gonna take between 12 and 48 hours for all of this to dry. I just leave it on a counter in my kitchen and when I walk by it, I give it a shake to make sure it's all getting spread out good. I tell the kids, they like to shake it. So, you'll know it's dry when all your beads stop sticking to the jar like that. So. I already did a jar, and this is what it'll look like when it's dry. This one's actually scented with Love Spell. I write the scent on the top, and I use red dye in this one. And see, nothing is sticking to the jar anymore. That's when your beads are dry. And I will say with these beads, I poured them in my jar last night about 11 p.m., and by 11 this morning, they were already like this. So that's what they should look like when they're dry. Next step. All right, the next thing you're gonna need is a baking sheet. I use this old ugly one for this kind of thing, but you can use the one that you normally use. It's not going to affect it in a way that where you can't use it regularly anymore. You're gonna need a metal cookie mold. 
I get these mostly from party stores, but there are some websites online and Amazon has some. They're pretty easy to find if you just Google. This one's about three and a half, four inches long and about an inch high. So like I said, I make mine rather large. Put that on the flattest part of your baking sheet that you can find so you don't have to worry about any of them coming out under it. And you're gonna need a nail or a screw that has a flat end like this. And you're gonna put it upside down in your mold. That's what's gonna make the hole for your string for when you're ready to hang it. That You'll just pull this out later and that will leave you your hole to make this hangable. Next, you're gonna pour your aroma beads into there. You're gonna fill it about three quarters of the way full, not quite all the way full. I try to do as well as I can without uh, getting my hands in the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna take these and spread them out to the edges some and then fill it up some more. A few of them escaped. There we go. Pour some more in. Spread them again. Trying to make them as even as possible all the way around it. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. It's almost to the height I want it. All right, let me give you a close up. Oh, there's a little escapey right here. I'm gonna pick him up and throw him in there. All right. So this is how it should look. If you look from the side, you can see it's almost full, but not quite. And I've got my roof and nail right there in the middle. You know, I call it a roof and nail. It's probably not a roof and nail, but it's a screw with a flat head. After it's all in there and you're ready to go, you can put more than one on here. I'm just doing one for the video, but you can put more than one. You're gonna put it in your oven at 350 degrees. Make sure your oven is already warmed all the way to 350 before you put it in. You don't want the temperature rising and getting to 350, so make sure it's pre-warmed. You're gonna put it in for six to seven minutes, but I would start checking it at five minutes because everybody's oven is different, and I know at different altitudes, ovens work differently. So mine usually takes the full seven minutes. I'm in South Louisiana and Mine usually takes a full seven minutes, but start checking it at five minutes. Don't walk away. Don't go start another project. Just stick with this little guy. All right, mine's going in the oven. All right, these have been in for five minutes and they're not quite ready yet. So I'm gonna keep letting them go a little longer. All right, mine have been in for seven minutes now. So let's give it a check. All right, that's what you're looking for. If you look at it, you'll see all of it has turned a dark, deep red now, and it looks wet. Don't worry, when it cools off, it'll go back to your original color. But that's what you want it to look like when it comes out of the oven. You'll see it looks almost black but you can still clearly see beads. It's not wet like a liquid. All right, I hope that helps so far. So now we're gonna let it cool. It'll probably take 30 minutes or more to cool. You can put it in the refrigerator if you're in a hurry. I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna let mine sit right here on the counter and cool. And then I'll come back to y'all when it's ready to pull off. And I can answer while this is cooling is people tell me it sticks whenever they try to take the cookie mold off their cookie sheet. Make sure you let it cool down completely. 
If you try to remove it while it's still like this, it will be sticky and it will stick. But if you let it cool, it should separate from the pan pretty easily. I also want to point out, if I go to the side, you can see just how much it has shrunk down. Remember how close to the top I had it before we put it in? So that's a good thing to keep in mind whenever you're filling it, you know. It's going to shrink down some whenever they really start to melt together. Okay, so mine has actually been sitting here for a couple of hours now because I went and ran some errands. But I'm going to take try to take it off the pan for the first time and we'll see if it has any sticking issues. <laughs> that couldn't have been easier. It just popped right off. Now let's see how it comes out the mold. All right, it came right out. Now I just gotta get this screw out right here. There we go. This is your freshie, but I still got a few more finishing touches that I like to do. If you look at it from the side angle, you'll see how it has um, these little peaks where some of the bees raised up while they were heating up. I like to just trim those with some scissors and make it flat. Okay, so like I said, this is optional, but I just take regular scissors and I go around the edge like this. And I just give it as smooth of an edge as I can. Purely cosmetic. Doesn't make a difference in how it smells or works. I just like it to look this way. I can't get them all. Maybe if I had some smaller scissors, but I'll get as many as I can and make it as smooth as I can. about it so it's smoother it's not quite as smooth as I'd like it all right your last step is just to get you a string or ribbon I know on some websites you can buy that like elastic string I just get a regular string because I have plenty of it Move it through your hole and now it is ready to hang wherever you're going to hang it from. The back will be smooth like this because it was against the cookie pan. And then the top will still be bumpy like this. Alright, let me try to answer some of the questions that I get a lot. One of the questions I get a lot is how much fragrance oil should you be putting in with the beads? I recommend at least two tablespoons of fragrance oil per one cup of beads. So you can make bigger jars at a time than I do. I like to do about a cup at a time, but you can definitely do two cups. If you do two cups, then use four tablespoons of fragrance oil. As far as the dye, you only need a drop or two, but you can put however much you need to adjust to the color that you want. And also, like I know at Hobby Lobby, there are very limited colors. There's like red, blue, yellow. So one thing you can do is, of course, you can mix colors like we did in kindergarten elementary school. You know, you can mix red and blue, make purple, that kind of thing. You could also leave them white, yeah, the clear color that they come, if you're not wanting the color at all. You don't have to add a candle dye. You can totally leave them clear and just put your fragrance oil in there. Um, there's also several places offline you can order a quick google search or pop up a whole bunch of places i'm kind of scared to promote any place after what happened with the last place i promoted a lot of people complained about their shipping charges their shipping time so just a quick google search and you can find some of those options for color dye all right another common question is where do i get my molds from that i make my scents with most of these I got at uh, the party store local to me. It's called Ultimate Party Store. I'm sure you probably have a party store in your area. Um, you, of course, same thing. A quick Google search and you can find metal cookie cutters on Amazon or other websites. Um, I usually don't pay more than $2 a piece for these. Also, Walmart at, at the end of season, like at the end of Halloween, at the end of Christmas, Easter, they will usually have 
their seasonal cookie cutters go on clearance. So sometimes I pick these up for 50 cents a piece um, or lower. So just keep, keep an eye out for them. I also pick them up from garage sales. Just make sure you're using metal and not plastic because plastic is going to melt in your oven. Where do I get my aroma beads from? First of all, make sure you're using aroma beads and not wax beads. They are not the same thing and they will melt all over your oven. They won't and you'll be very disappointed. This didn't come in this bag. The bag that it came in broke on me. But I got these beads that I did in this video off of Amazon. Um, this was a three pound bag of aroma beads. If you look at them, they look like little bitty, almost like rubber balls. You know, they're not like a wax melt. So um, I got this three pound bag off of Amazon for $18.25 with no shipping. Like I said, there's several other places online that you can buy them from. I'm not gonna name any names. Um, but if you really wanna know, you can send me an email and I'll let you know. I'm just not promoting any company because I'm not affiliated with any company. I don't have their permission to promote them. And if you have a problem with that company, I don't want you to blame me for it. Okay, next question. All right, how many cents do I get out of a jar of beads? I put a cup of beads in a jar, and this is the jar that I used today, so I only made one freshy ornament out of it so far, and that's how much is left. I can easily probably make another, maybe two, or one and a half, depending on how big I make them. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see where I did where you can do a two-tone freshener where you know it's half one color and half another color so i use all of the beads i don't waste them just because i don't have enough to make a whole one i'll make a two tone freshener or you can make an extra small one all right that's that question how long do the scents last that's a good question because it varies it depends on how big of a room you're using it in how much fragrance oil you put in it how big your freshener is and the temperature outside it seems to me in winter they last a little longer, in summer, not so much. Um, I'd say they are a good strong smell for a good two weeks. After two weeks they start to fade, or you might just be getting used to it too because you're in your car regularly and you smell it regularly. But I would say you get a good strong scent for two weeks. After two weeks, the, f this f the smell starts to fade, but they're still good. I'll take them and I'll move them to a dresser drawer in my house, like you know, your sock drawer, your pajama drawer, um, a small linen closet, just stick it in there. Your kid's uh, locker at school is a great place to put them. That's a small area. And so you can still get some more life out of them even after they're not in your car. And if you're like me, I like the way they look. So even after they don't smell, there's still decoration in my car. So I hope that answers that question. I get this email a lot. Help, my aroma beads are stuck to the pan and I can't get them out. All right. I have not personally ran into that problem to where it was impossible to get them out. I have had some that were difficult to get out where it took a little bit more elbow strength to get them out. And I've noticed that certain scents seem to be a stickier scent than others. Um, Love Spell, which is what I use today, tends to be a stickier scent. Um, the vanilla, the cool water, the leather, I've never had that problem with them. But common mistakes are you don't let it cool completely because we get excited and we want to take it out right away. Um, so make sure you let it cool completely. You can even put it in the refrigerator or the freezer and if that's still not working, I mean, they are very durable. They're kind of like a rubber whenever they're done. So feel free to, you know, manhandle them and get them out of there, you know, but I haven't had that happen to where it's been that extreme yet. So I don't have a whole lot of advice on that except for make sure it's cool completely and don't be afraid to push and tug on it. It's not gonna tear it or come apart. Okay, so the way that I got my aroma beads for free was I used an app called Fetch Rewards. And the way Fetch Rewards works is it's a free app you download on your phone and you get points for uploading your receipts for things that you buy at grocery stores, gas stations, things like that. Certain items give you more points than others, um, but every receipt gives you t at least 25 points. But they also have bonus items if you buy certain brands, but you're not required to. I upload all of my receipts to this app. I accumulate points and every 5,000 points is a $5 Amazon gift card or other gift cards, but I choose Amazon. And 
So I just accumulated points. I traded in my points for Amazon gift cards and I used that to order my beads. So I'm out, no money. Um, I will put my referral link for Fetch Rewards down below. And if you sign up with Fetch Rewards using my code, you get 2,000 points, which is equal to like $2 right off the bat just for signing up. So there's that little tidbit. Right. I think that's all the questions that I can think to answer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you somehow came across this video for the first time and you haven't seen my other videos, I do have a more beginner friendly video. You can go to my playlist, look under DIY and you'll see the most viewed video I have. I think it has over 50, 60,000 views at this point. And so um, it walks you through step by step, very beginning of how to make these beads. This is a little bit more advanced than that, I guess, because I didn't take the time to go through it in real detail. But I have several different videos on how to make these and I hope you enjoy them and feel free to comment. My email's listed below so you can send me an email and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. Thank you.